In this screencast, I will illustrate a rather old school looking monitor in Inkscape version 0.45. This screencast was inspired by one of our viewers. He inquired about how to draw certain elements of real life equipment, such as controls, keypads, buttons, and electronic displays, just to name a few. Probably the most important feature of this screencast is how I intend to illustrate a bezel around a glass screen. So let's get to it. All right, the first thing that we'll want to do is double check our document properties. I've got this set up for 1000 pixels wide by 800 pixels high. I'm going to bring down some guides and I'm going to make sure that my guide is halfway up and I'll make sure that I'm halfway over. Okay, that's good enough. Um, I'm going to go ahead and draw a perfect square by holding the control key down. Something about like this. And I'm going to select page and we're going to align our square to the page. There we go. Okay, and I want to make this just a little bit lighter. Looks pretty good. Make sure I don't have a stroke turned on. Okay. And I'm going to duplicate this. And we're going to make this duplicated copy just a little bit darker so we can tell the difference between the two. I'm going to select this handle and I'm going to hold my control and my shift key down at the same time and just pull it in. Get something about like that. Okay. Now we can make this just a little bit lighter so we can see it. And we're going to zoom in on this. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is grab my Bezier tool and I'm going to pick on that corner. Uh, I'm not going to turn my snaps on because it's not really important. As long as we get it kind of close enough, it's it should be good enough for this. And we'll select our center and we'll put it back up there. Okay. Now we can zoom in on this here and adjust our path. First thing I'm gonna do though is let me roll that up and we'll grab our fill and stroke dialog. and we'll cap our path we'll roll that up to get that out of the way okay now I'm gonna take this actually let me look at the other side here okay, I think that looks pretty good I'm just checking the straightness of my lines I'm gonna take this I'm gonna take our background copy our last selected we'll center that up and I'm going to push that to the top let's get these out of the way here okay okay now we'll take this and I'm just gonna push it down just a little bit now let's undo that here yeah, we'll leave it for now. I think it looks pretty good. Sometimes when I'm drawing, I, I have second thoughts about what I'm doing. So that's what that's what I'm going through. Okay, so now I'm going to take this uh, triangle that I've just drawn, and we're going to give it a gradient. Um, I'm going to take the inside first and, and lighten it back up here just a little bit. And we'll go just a little bit darker. Okay. See that didn't change much. All right, now we're going to give this a gradient. Uh, we'll do something about like this. We'll do an edit on that, and we're going to add a stop. We're going to go to our last stop, fill that all the way, stop in between, 
we're going to make a white. About like that. We're going to go back to our first and second stops and make sure that those are a little dark. Okay, we'll adjust one. We'll copy it. And we want our starting and ending stop to be identical. So I'm going to paste that there. Okay, now we have a nice gradient. I'm going to go ahead now and adjust the stroke. I want my stroke to be white. And I'm going to make the stroke a little bit bigger. We'll do a 2. Okay, and I'm also going to make that stroke a radial gradient. And I'll show you where I'm going with this here. Okay, we'll select our gradient tool. Now, sometimes when you're working with gradients, um, you have gradients on top of each other. If I were to select this right now, both my radial gradient and my linear gradient will be selected. So we want to hold our shift key down to grab that gradient and move it away. Now we can line that back up again. Okay, now I want to pull this down, pull this out. What I'm trying to do is, is get just some white lines that just fade into these corners. About like so. just a little bit more see what that looks like I think that looks pretty good let's adjust it just a little bit more pull up on this here there we go okay we'll select off of that and what I'm trying to do we want to eliminate the white stroke that we have on top so we'll pull this down just a little bit more. That looks like again. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to adjust that stroke just a little bit bigger. Okay, I think we'll we'll do a 2.5. Okay, and I'm also going to blur that just a little. Okay, I think that looks probably, let's try maybe a 1.25. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. All right, now let's take a look at that fill. We're going to edit that again. We're going to edit our starting and stopping points. I want to make sure this is just a little darker. I think that looks pretty good now. Okay, that's that. Now what I'm going to do is take this piece right here, our square, and I'm going to give it a linear gradient. And we'll edit that. And we're going to add a stop. Okay, we'll make our last stop uh, full opacity. We'll make our middle stop full opacity and we'll give it just a little bit of a white gradient. Okay, we'll adjust that in just a second. Okay, this is going to go from top to bottom. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to make these corners just a little bit darker. And the one on the bottom, we're going to make just a little bit lighter, just like you see here. One in the middle, we can go just a smidge whiter. Okay, that gives us a nice gradient there. Okay, now I'm going to take this triangle, I'm going to duplicate it, 
and I'm going to actually flip that around. Okay, and we're going to move it to the bottom. So we'll select our triangle, we'll select this square, holding the shift key down. We'll go to our align and distribute dialog, and we'll push that to the bottom, just like we see there. Okay, now that looks kind of an odd uh, shape there with our gradients, but that has a purpose. And I'll show you in the next step. Okay. Before I do that, there's something that I've forgotten. So let's grab our square again, and we're going to add a white stroke to it. So we go to our Fill and Stroke dialog, turn on a stroke, and we only need probably a point seven five. We'll see what that looks like. Okay, and we will give it a radial gradient. And we'll adjust that a gradient. Okay. Select our shift key to get off of it. And move that around here. Okay. Now I'm just holding the control key down. Pulling on these nodes. Okay, that's what that looks like. Okay, it looks pretty good. I'm just trying to show with that white stroke that I added around the white portion, I just want to show just a little white on the sides. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do, move that to the side for now. We are going to go to our uh, star and polygon icon, and I'm going to set this up for four corners, and I'm going to give it a rounded uh, a value of 0.140. Okay, so I'm going to hold the control key down so I get a perfect shape. And this is going to give us kind of our, our rounded square. This works great for uh, like an old TV screen. Okay, now we'll make this just a little bit lighter so we can see it. I'm going to put it right on top of here. Okay, now this has a stroke, so we'll want to go to our fill and stroke dialog and remove that stroke. Okay, I'm going to put this right in the center. We can do that by selecting this object. And since I was drawing on the center of my page, we can go to our Align dialog, select Page, and center horizontally and vertically. Now I'll select this new square that I've drawn, hold the Control key down and the Shift key down, and pull it up. It's just KDE barking at me there. Okay. And we get that. Okay. Now, now that we have that, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fix this bottom to get it a little bit lighter, this bottom triangle that we drew. So I'm going to select the triangle. We'll go to our fill and stroke dialog. And I'm going to hit duplicate on this. The reason that I want to hit duplicate is because both of our triangles are sharing the same gradient. If I modify the bottom one, then a top one gets modified. And I don't want to do that. So at this point, I'm going to hit duplicate on that. And now I have a separate gradient. And I can edit this. And we'll select the middle. We're going to make it just a little bit wider we go and our beginning and ending points we're going to make that just a little brighter about like that okay I'm going to copy that starting point and we're going to use it on this hit paste there okay and here is our bezel okay now it looks like what I'm gonna add down here because this blends in a little bit a trick that you can do is grab your bezier tool and draw right on top of this and whoops 
we're going to add a highlight. That's selected. We'll grab our stroke. Um, fill and stroke dialog. I'm going to turn this white. We'll cap our ends. And I'll make this just a little fatter. Okay. I'll give this a radial gradient. I'll show you what that looks like. There, you can see that it kind of simulates like a, a, a flare, uh, a shine, I guess. I'm going to take this and make it just a little bit bigger. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. If you want to add just a little bit of blur to that, sometimes it's a nice little touch just to reduce some of the uh, hard edges there. I'm going to go ahead and bump it back. Okay. Now our screen, I'm going to make it just a little bit darker here. Okay, I think we're getting closer. I'm going to zoom out. I no longer need the guides. So we'll go up to our view. And we'll hide our guides. I'm going to take this back very outside shape and I'm going to duplicate this. We're going to give this a different color and we'll give it like a dark burnt orange. And holding the control and the shift key down I'll grab this upper arrow and we'll pull it out and we'll send it to the back. Okay, That kind of gives us a nice uh, background for this monitor. Okay, now I'm going to take this brown that I have here and we are going to give it a linear gradient and I'll edit that and I'm going to add a stop. We'll take our very last gradient and give it full opacity and the middle gradient gets full opacity and we're going to give it just a touch of lightness in the center there pretty good and I'm gonna take that and we're gonna change the gradient from horizontal to vertical we get something about like that okay that kinda of lightens up the this background a little bit now that I've done that I'm gonna take this uh, rectangle here or I'm sorry the square and we're gonna give it just a little bit of a gradient as well to lighten things up a bit. Go just a little darker there. Kind of changes the, the lighting. I'm not the best at uh, figuring out how things are, are lit when illustrating. It kind of takes a little trial and error sometimes. So it might not be 100% accurate, but that's okay. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is uh, we're going to give this uh, monitor some depth. So I'm going to grab my Bezier tool and I'm just going to kind of eye this right now. We'll slap that to the corner here and I'll pull that in there. Okay, now we'll true this up a little bit. We'll select our path. Uh, we'll select our stroke. We'll do rounded caps and we'll adjust our nodes and I'm just going to pull this down about like that. This is one of those close enough is good enough and since I'm hurting for time for the screencast I'm just going to move rather quickly and we'll pull this down about right there. Okay. Now using our uh, uh, outline here as kind of a guide. I'm just going to eye the angles here. We'll just pull that in just a little bit. I'm also going to take this and now drop it down. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is select this. I'm going to select my eyedropper and I'm going to pick the center, the lightest color of my brown background there. I'll fill that in. And now we're going to make turn our black stroke white. And 
and we'll make that a little bigger. We'll do a two. And I'm going to give that stroke a radial gradient. Okay. So we'll edit that gradient. Put that down in the middle. Like so. Okay, that'll simulate just a little bit of shine on that hard edge. Zoom out, see where we are. Okay, now we're we're getting close here. Let me add a couple more elements before we stretch this down. I'm gonna take this outside square and duplicate it and I'm gonna make it all black. We're gonna go to our fill and stroke dialog and I'm gonna give this a blur. Let's try a one. See where we are with that. Yeah, a little bit more. We'll do a 1.5. Okay, I'm gonna put that all the way to the back. Then I'll select our uh, brown rectangle and send it all the way to the back. This kind of gives us just a little bit of, of depth to this bezel. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is take this whole thing and group it together. Whoops, I forgot a step. Before we do that, I've got to add a little shine to this monitor. So let me take this and duplicate it and we'll do the run-of-the-mill shine here okay do something about like that okay now I'm gonna take this and make it white okay I'll select our white screen I'll select our bezier path we will do a path intersection. Okay, I'll zoom in on this. Select that white piece. Select my node tool. Go to path. Do a dynamic offset and pull that in just a little bit. There we go. Zoom out just a little bit here. And I'm going to take that and give that a gradient. Turn on our fill and stroke dialog, linear gradient, adjust the gradient just a little bit. About like that. And we'll adjust the transparency. Okay, that gives it just a little bit of shine on that monitor. Or the glass portion, I guess. Okay, now I'll take the whole thing and group it together. And since a monitor isn't perfectly square, we'll just take this, we'll stretch it down just a little bit. We get something about like this. Okay, that's starting to look a little bit better. Okay, and I think finally what we'll do, we'll add just a little bit of shadow to the front. We can do that by selecting our Uh, ellipse tool. I'm going to turn our transparency back on here so we can see it. There we go. Make that just a little bit lighter. And we want to remove the stroke. I'll roll that up out of the way there. Shut to the end. Okay. And we are going to make it blurry. I'll give it about a 9 for a blur. And we'll make it just a little transparent. There we go. And we'll send it all the way to the back and we'll push that up just a little bit. About like that. Now we'll group that again. And there is our finished product. Okay, so let's zoom in on this. Take a look at this thing here. Okay, basically what I have, since this is a monitor and not a television, 
Um, monitors uh, only have on and off switches usually with some uh, 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 other basic controls. Uh, but if you were making a television, for example, um, you would want your channel buttons on and off, that type of thing. I'm not going to do that now because uh, I'm running kind of short on this uh, screencast. But uh, the most important thing about this screencast was this bezel, making this, you know, this chamfer effect around here. Um, and that can be used in a number of places where you want to illustrate, like a glass monitor or or some type of a, uh, an LCD crystal display or something for uh, a machine whatever it would be like maybe a, a printer or a copier so that's basically it and also this thing can be used for an icon whatever you want to use it for so it's not basically so much about you know drawing a monitor as it is drawing some of the elements in it so I hope you got something from it thank you for watching I'm he the next